Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven, and I am tired of looking crusty. I'm used to looking crusty. I normally don't have a problem with looking crusty, but we have been in quarantine for how long now? I have lost track of the days and the nail shop is closed. The waxing place is closed. The hair salon is closed. All the places that we could go to kind of like make ourselves feel better, do a nice little self-care maintenance day, all those places are closed and rightfully so. We want to keep everybody safe. We want to make sure that only the essential workers are having to work. So I don't have a problem with that. The only thing is that leaves me looking like this. Y'all don't even want to see my toes and I'm tired of it. So we're going to have to do a DIY pamper extravaganza. This is literally how I've been looking for this entire quarantine. I have no nails. Who am I? Who am I? Who is she? We don't know her. I literally went to the store looking like this. Actually, to be more accurate, this is how I've been looking recently. Just hair is just doing whatever it wants to do. No makeup, no nothing. I put on makeup like three times during this whole quarantine just for Instagram content. So we are going to be doing a full bubble bath spa day experience with exfoliation, moisturization, lots of scrubbing and skincare. I'm gonna be doing a facial. I'm gonna be doing my hair. I'm going to also do DIY um, individual lash extensions. And I'm also gonna be doing DIY nails. Also, I know this video is pretty long because I'm showing you so many different DIY treatments, but stay tuned till the very end because I'm also going to be showing you guys how I do a DIY sugar wax on myself for body hair removal. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of different hacks and tips and tricks that I use in general. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. All right, you guys, step one, phase one, do something to this hair that desperately needs to be styled. So it's been a while since I've done these bad boys, which are curl formers. I don't use them that often because sometimes it comes out really good and sometimes it comes out really bad. Let's hope that today is a good day. I actually did already wash my hair and I did like a hair mask and everything, but then I got out of the shower and I just, let my hair air dry and just let it go and so that's why it looks so just dry it has zero product in it but i did do a hair mask i think these are the main products i'm going to be using so just a hydrating curl cream like a leave-in conditioner type thing i'm going to put a little bit of oil in my hair so this is carol's daughter black vanilla hair oil and then for some hold to actually hold the curl i'm gonna use this cantu gel this is like a strong hold maximum hold gel i'm just gonna use a little bit of it little drop of oil little drop little drop of oil oh, oh, oh. So essentially the way that I like to use these curl formers is on damp hair. So I just sprayed my hair down with a bottle of water since my hair had already dried. And then I apply a leave-in conditioner of some sort for some moisture, some oil as well. And then for some hold, I'm using the gel that I showed you guys. And I just go section by section, detangling, brushing my hair out, making sure that it's smooth and applying the curl formers with the little hook that they give you. It takes some practice um, to be kind of quick at putting these on, but once you get the hang of it, it can go pretty quickly and I am alternating the colors because the pink ones curl away from the face and the orange ones curl towards my face so I'm alternating as I go that way I get more of a somewhat natural look by the end of it okay so my curl formers are all installed uh, normally I would like put these in and try to leave them in overnight you want to make sure that they're like super super dry before you take them out um, I don't know if I'm gonna leave them in overnight. We'll see, but in the meantime, I wanna at least like get these main ones out of my face. And that way I can do the rest of my pampering in peace. I'll be looking crazy during this whole video because I'm gonna have these in until the very end. Okay, so one of the next things that I wanna do is definitely do my nails. And I've been seeing so much about the Apre 
nails. I think that's how you say that. So I just went ahead and ordered me. Ooh, look how nice. Ordered me a nice little appray kit for myself. If you guys have not heard of this, it's basically like a gel nail extension, gel X kit. So it's kind of like giving you the same results as like long acrylic nails, but it's with gel. And they sell these like kits where you can do it yourself. Oh my God, it was kind of pricey. I know they have dupes on Amazon now, but everything on Amazon is like sold out and delayed shipping because everyone's at home trying to do their nails themselves right now. So I really wasn't able to find like anything good on Amazon right now. So I went ahead and just got the actual name brand from their website because um, they seem to have pretty fast shipping and this came just in time. I just got it today, so this is my first time opening it. This is not sponsored by the way. I bought this with my own money. It was a little bit pricey. It was like a hundred and I wanna say like $150 for the whole like starter kit. Um, so you have all your like gels and primers. They give you everything you need and this is like a little uh, UV lamp to cure it with. They give you a nail file and then you get to pick which kind of um, like forms you want, like the tips. <gasps> wow, look at me, so professional. So I got the sculpted coffin long because uh, that's kind of the shape that I like to get in my nails when I go get them done. I always get acrylics and I always get tips and that's just like my addiction is like long acrylic nails and I have been struggling. Like it is so, so weird. I know you guys have been noticing. It's super weird for me to not have my long acrylic nails. So hopefully I'll be able to do this and get like a similar result. Like I literally don't even barely even own nail polish anymore because I became so addicted to actually going to the nail shop. Once I got a taste of it, I started going religiously and that was like my me time. That's my escape. That is like my one thing that I do for myself is go to the nail shop. I don't really go get my hair done. I don't really get facials or anything like that, but I do go to the nail shop. Okay. I get like every two weeks, get my acrylics once a month I do my gel pedicure like that's like my thing so I am extremely rusty when it comes to doing your own nails here is the little instruction manual it seems pretty easy from like the videos that I saw I also bought this um, little jinky little nail file nail drill thing I also looked on Amazon again same problem with not being able to like get anything or everything is like sold out So I got this. I don't remember if it was Target or Walmart one day when I was getting groceries um, So we'll see if this works at all as backup. I got these um, Just regular store-bought press-on nails the kiss jelly fantasy They have little rhinestones and glitter like wow press-on nails have really evolved since the last time I ever saw these and these are kind of a longish ish like a medium length but i'm not like a huge fan of these and i feel like these will just pop off super easily so we'll just keep these as an emergency backup so first i took some acetone just to clean off the nail polish that i had on my nails and just make sure that my nails were clean and prepped i was lucky to find this acetone because it was pretty much sold out everywhere but i happened to find some i think at walmart so i'm just cleaning off the nails because i did paint them at one point and i just want to make sure that they're prepped and ready to go and then i'm also going to just trim my nails all the way down and try to get them looking somewhat decent so that they'll be somewhat cleaned up underneath what I'm doing. So just clipping down any jagged edges. My nails are extremely damaged, extremely frail, extremely just everything bad because I've been wearing acrylics for eight years straight with no breaks. So I'm doing my best to prep them, but they're very thin and very just messed up. So I'm just filing them, roughing up the texture because I know I want this stuff to stick on there really well. And then I opened up my little rinky dink nail drill. It came with batteries, so that was nice. And I just decided to take the Emery tool, put it on, test it out, and see if I could use it to kind of like buff and rough up my nail a little bit. And it worked pretty decently, actually. The instructions at first were pretty easy to follow. It just said start by using the pH bonder that they give you. So I painted that onto all of my nails. Pretty easy so far. And then 
then the next step said to put the primer on. So I'll grab the primer, painted that on as well. And okay, so far so good. Then I knew I needed to get the little UV LED light ready. So they give you the light and they give you the cord, but they don't give you something to plug it into. So I just used the thing off of my phone charger to plug it into. And that wasn't a big deal. And this is meant to be used for like one nail at a time. That's why it's kind of small, but the way it's built, it's a little bit like hard to use on yourself. So I kind of had to struggle to figure that out. But the next step is to actually take the extend gel. So this is the actual like thick gel and you paint a coat onto your natural nail first and cure it so that the extension has something to stick to. But it was a little annoying that I had to do them like one or two at a time. It kind of took forever. Wait, oh my God. I just made a bad rookie mistake, I think. I was supposed to, you know, like figure out what size, you know, tips I needed first. Like, you know how you, you pick them out and you see which ones are gonna fit and you put them against your nail. Well, I already painted my nails with the gel and I cured it for how long it said and it's like still very sticky. I don't know if it's still supposed to be sticky or it was supposed to completely harden, but it's definitely sticky and I even put it in there for extra time and it's still sticky. Meaning that like now when I try to go and pick out my sizes, I can't really like, you know, it's sticky. So now I can't like place it against it to see because it's going to get all sticky. Dang, should I just try it on my other dry hand and hope that my hands are symmetrical? So, yep, that's exactly what I decided to do. I just measured the forms on my other dry hand to get my sizes, and then I just used the exact same sizes for the other hand and just would hope that my fingernails are somewhat the same and symmetrical. So I picked out all my sizes, laid them out in order so I know which nail would go with which you know, finger, it's just like when you do press on nails pretty much. And then they do tell you on the instructions that you need to rough up the inside of the extension. So I'm just using my little nail drill again to kind of file and rough up the inside where it's gonna be touching my nail. Surprisingly, this drill did get the job done. I can definitely tell it's not very powerful, but it was good enough. And now you're supposed to paint on some of the same gel stuff to the extension. So I'm gonna start with my pinky on this hand. Let's just paint it on. I'm gonna start with a little bit like that. Start at the cuticle. Start at the cuticle and push down. Ah! That was messy. And then you have to, oh no. Oh honey, no. Okay y'all, so I definitely struggled trying to figure out how to put the nails on, hold it down, and cure it with the light. You have to hold it down while it's under the light. But this little tiny light is so small that it was like impossible for me to hold my own nail down and get the light on top at the same time. So I struggled with it for quite a while trying to just figure it out. Gel was squeezing out of the sides and getting all over my cuticle and all over my hands. It was getting sticky everywhere because this is my first time doing this. So I didn't really know exactly how much gel to use. So I guess I used a little bit too much at first. This definitely takes some practice, I think, to be able to apply them cleanly. So then I got smart and I decided to use this other larger lamp that I borrowed from my mom. Luckily, she already had one. And this made it much easier to be able to put the nail on, hold it down with my other hand, and at least get it somewhat under the light so it would start to cure and hold itself down before I could actually fully put it under there and get it to fully stick down and cure and harden. And once I got the hang of this, this worked out a lot better. I just really do not recommend the little tiny light that you get in the actual Apray kit. I'm digging it. And this actually fits the shape of my nail. This particular one fits this finger perfectly. Like it just fits from side to side perfectly. And I like this little shape. Wow, okay, we might be getting somewhere. So I just continued putting the nails on using this method and the way that I can kind of explain it is it's pretty much the same concept as using press on nails where you just kind of glue on the nails but instead of using glue, you're using gel and instead of just letting the glue dry, you have to actually cure the gel to make it dry and adhere but it's kind of just like press on nails except right off the bat, I could tell that these feel way more sturdy and way more stuck on than regular 
other like press on nails would feel. I feel like for me, when you just glue on press on nails, they can pop off really easily, but these felt very, very secure right away. All right, everybody, about seven years later, I now have all of my nails uh, glued on, if you wanna call it that. I don't know the proper terminology, but they're all on there, okay? So I'm gonna file them down on the tips. Can I just file that little number off? We made it past the hard part. The nails are on. That's all I needed this like whole kit for. So now you're just, you can use whatever kind of like regular nail polish or gel nail polish, or if you wanna do a design. From here, it's like free reign. All right, so everything has been like shaped and filed or whatever. I guess we're good to go to just go ahead and paint them. So like I said, I'm borrowing this nail polish from my mom. She says she likes it. Okay, so I had thought that I made it past the hard part. I thought that just painting my nails was gonna be the easy part. This is gonna be really quick. Just paint your nails and you're good to go. Wrong. I just made so many stupid mistakes at this point. I was borrowing this nail polish from my mom and she told me that even though it was not gel polish, that it worked best if you still use the LED light with it anyway. So I was just following her advice. I used the primer that came with the set but please note that these are just little sample sizes of nail polish keep that in mind so I used the base coat used it with the light even though I don't think you're really supposed to do that you're supposed to let it fully air dry I did not do that but I went ahead and just started painting layers and layers of the actual nail polish on top using the light thinking that I'm curing it thinking that I'm drying it it's not actually getting dry at all if anything it was kind of just drying the top layer but it was still wet underneath keep that in mind as well but I was doing pretty good i'm painting my nails it's a cute color okay they're looking decent they're not actually fully dry like i think they are but they're looking decent but then i didn't catch this on camera but halfway through painting my nails keep in mind they weren't totally dry i had a catastrophe bougie was trying to run away and run outside so i had to grab them and when i grabbed him my nails got all messed up and cat fur got stuck in them so i had to kind of stop halfway through and try to repaint them so the paint job is just not great kind of lumpy kind of not good but then i decided okay let me add a little razzle dazzle so i happened to have this little glitter top coat so I was like let me do a little ombre look with it try to save this manicure because it's not going so good so far and I did a little hack where you use a cosmetic sponge to apply the glitter because when you just paint it on you get mostly clear nail polish and not a lot of glitter but if you use a sponge and dab it on you'll get more glitter out of it so I just dabbed it on and did kind of like a little glitter ombre effect and it was actually kind of cute then I decided to use the gel top coat that actually came with the Apre set i'm like i'm using regular nail polish but i'll just use a gel top coat just to really like seal it all in so i used this and then i cured it but this was my mistake because the gel top coat was definitely dry and hardened and cured but all the nail polish underneath was actually still wet and that caused me a major problem all right you guys i am finally done and i hate it here this has taken me a this literally took me a few hours i don't even know exactly how long but hours from start to finish the end result is very underwhelming not because this kit is bad or anything like that but i had the hardest time just trying to paint a simple coat on here since i'm using these little these are little sample sizes and i literally ran out of nail polish once i got to my other hand this hand was done looking pretty good then I got to my other hand, ran out of nail polish. So I got the next closest color and like, it's kind of, but then I just, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, they look decent from like a decent distance. Like it's not absolutely terrible. I think the shape and the length is cute. I think the kit is a good kit. I just would prefer a professional result. I would prefer being able to sit back and relax at the nail shop and just let the professionals do their job. I don't feel very pampered right now. So let's get into the real pampering and let's do a nice little bubble bath. Haha, <laughs> but at this moment, I didn't realize that my nails weren't actually dry like I thought they were. <laughs> but we're just gonna move on and you'll see what happens later. So before I run my bubble bath, I wanna go ahead and do a face mask so I can have my face mask on while I sit in the bathtub. And I'm gonna do my favorite face mask, which if you have been on the internet at all in the past few years, you probably already know about this. This is the Aztec 
um, clay mask, the Indian healing clay mask mixed with apple cider vinegar. So this is a powder that you can get pretty much anywhere these days. I actually can get it at H-E-B, my grocery store, or you can just order it off of Amazon. I think they have it at Whole Foods and stuff too. So it's like this clay powder. You mix it with apple cider vinegar and you literally make a paste. And this is my favorite face mask. I know it's nothing new. A lot of you guys have probably already heard about it, but this is like the only face mask that I feel actually does something. Like you can feel it working. It gives you immediate results. And I don't know, it's not just like for show. Like it really works. It really like helps clear out my skin. It makes my skin more glowy, just you know, actually has a good effect on my skin. I think the real measurements are like a one to one ratio, like one tablespoon of powder, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I just eyeball it because I've done this so many times and it doesn't really matter. You just want to make like a paste. So you put a little bit of the Aztec clay powder in there and then Add just a dash of apple cider vinegar. You don't want it to be too watery. I feel like the consistency of this matters because you want it to be a nice, almost like pancake batter consistency. So basically you just want a nice consistency like that. Not runny, but not like super, super thick. And you'll know it's the right consistency when it gives you a nice, thick, opaque layer like this. Like you don't want it to be like thin and see-through. You also don't want it to be too thick because this mask dries down completely. Like it's going to harden and get like completely dry and crusty. But if it's really thick, it's gonna take forever to dry and it's just not gonna dry properly. And it's not gonna give you the like effect that you want. So you see how this looks on my skin? Hopefully you guys can tell just by looking at it, the like consistency that I'm talking about, because this is gonna dry really nicely and you're gonna get the best results. I've done this mask a million times, but yeah, just leave it on until it fully, fully dries. So I'm gonna let mine dry while I sit in my bubble bath. And I'm going to show you what I'm about to put in here. These are my little like, I don't know if you want to call it hacks or whatever, but this is how I like to do my bubble bath. I like to actually put um, natural oils in my bubble bath because I feel like it helps to moisturize my skin as I'm soaking in there. I mean, do this at your own discretion. Um, I never had a problem with it and I feel like it makes my skin really nice and soft and moisturized. So I'll put like castor oil, which everybody knows is good for your hair, but it's also good for your skin. Um, or avocado oil or jojoba oil or any kind of like natural body oils. This is one from a small business. This one smells really good. So whatever kind of like natural body oil. And then I also like to put a little bit of tea tree oil because tea tree oil is like a cure-all. It's like how apple cider vinegar is like good for everything. I feel like tea tree oil is good for everything when it comes to like your skin. I also have like these little natural bath bombs. I don't even remember what brand these are or where these are from, but you know, throw yourself a little bath bomb in there. Some bubbles, some bubble bath. I got this little bottle of bubble bath over here that looks like wine or something, but bubble bath. And then of course your candles. Set the mood with some candles. And I've gotten a lot of questions about this thing. I've had this for a while. This is a game changer when you're doing your bowl bath so you can like, you know, read a book or even have like your drink sitting there or whatever. You can get these off of Amazon. And you know what else I've been doing lately? I have been taking my phone and putting it in a Ziploc bag. I have the iPhone 10 or whatever this is, which I think is waterproof to a certain extent, but like I don't trust it. So I just like put my phone in a Ziploc bag <laughs> and zip it up. Make sure it's completely zipped. Y'all see what time it is? It's almost one in the morning. This is what pampering is really like. I have taken my phone in the shower with me like this or like with a bubble bath just in case I drop it or if my hands are really wet or whatever because the touch screen still works.
<laughs> Y'all, honestly, this pampering video is not very relaxing, not very pampering. It's been quite stressful so far. Bougie literally, you know, he, he wants to chill up here. That's fine, there's a candle. I'm watching him, I'm like, oh my God, you know, don't get by the candle. But what he decides to do is he decides to knock this completely over and dump my glass of wine directly into my bath water. That is what just happened. Bougie just knocked my entire glass of wine into my bath water. I just got in here. I just got comfortable. Now I have an empty glass of wine and wine in my bath water. My fresh, hot bath water that I just got in. <laughs> Bougie! How, why did you do that to me? I'm trying to have a relaxing, pampering spa day. With all the catastrophes going on, they weren't like completely dry and so they just got all like mushed up and messed up. The paint got all messed up and they're just looking worse and worse by the minute. From me trying to catch my wine glass, trying to make sure Bougie doesn't, oh my God. All right, well, so much for that. I'm letting the water out and I am going to just take a shower instead. So over here I have my exfoliation products because I'm gonna be exfoliating my skin really well. I was gonna do this after my bath anyway, but I guess I'm just kind of skipping the bath now since it got ruined. But um, I'm just gonna be exfoliating my body really well. These are some of my products that I like to use. Um, this is the Scrub Em and Leave Em by Soap and Glory. This smells really good. It doesn't really work as well though. I really like the smell of it though. And then I know a lot of people hate, 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 hate the St. Ives Apricot Scrub, but I feel like it works really well for your body. It might be too harsh for your face, but I like to use it for my body. Um, and then I also have these products from European Wax Center, which are made to help with ingrown hairs and stuff like that. So I usually just kind of mix together a few of these products. I know some people hate physical exfoliants, but again, for my body skin, not necessarily my face skin, I really like them. So I'm gonna be mixing these together and really, really exfoliating my skin really well because then I'm going to be applying a fake tan and you always wanna exfoliate really well before you tan. Okay, but in the meantime, in between time, my face mask has dried pretty much all the way. This is what it should look like. That's how I know it's ready to be washed off. So I'm about to hop in the shower. I'm gonna wash this off in the shower. I'm leaving my hair in here. Um, I'm just gonna like not get this wet. All right, so I am out of the shower and you are just going to have to take my word for it. My skin feels so soft, so much smoother, and it just has like a better overall feel and texture to it and it just feels super, super clean. But trust me, if you guys have not tried this mask before, when you try it, you will see how your skin feels like so much softer. So it's not really something you can see, but you can definitely feel it. And then all the rest of my skin on my body, even though I was only in the bathtub for like two seconds, I can definitely feel how much more like moisturized it feels from the oils and from me like exfoliating, getting all that dead skin off. My legs feel nice and smooth. Um, I also shaved my legs in the shower and shaving like goes so much smoother once your skin is moisturized and exfoliated and stuff. So you just get an overall better result. Again, not really something you can see, but it's something I can definitely feel. I am gonna put on a little bit of of lotion onto my dry areas though because you always want to put on lotion before you use any type of self tanner this is one of my favorite ones that I typically use it's the loving tan ultra dark mousse oh and by the way my nails my nails were obliterated absolutely destroyed I'm gonna have to do these over I'm gonna have to take this off and repaint them clearly I'm not gonna do that tonight because it is literally two o'clock in the morning. Okay, so anyways, I am just going to do my tan real quick. This has to set overnight anyway. This is the last thing I'm gonna do tonight and I will finish everything up tomorrow and we will see the full glow up results tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I use the Loving Tan Deluxe Bronzing Mousse in Ultra Dark and I also have the um, Loving Tan little mint that you use with it. And like I said, you always want to be thoroughly exfoliated and moisturized before you do this. So I'm actually just going to tan like my chest 
like can you tell i don't know if y'all can really tell on camera but this whole area upper area of my body is always way lighter than even my arms and definitely like my legs and the rest of my back like my legs have a nice natural tan to them all the time and then from here up is always really pale so sometimes i like to just tan this area just to kind of blend it in it gives me a nice bronzy glow so essentially all i'm doing right now is applying the tan mainly to my chest my neck and i will be applying it to my face here in a minute and i am blending it down my arms and my stomach a little bit just so it's not a harsh line but i'm not applying it to the lower half of my body because that part of me is naturally darker like i said and i'm just trying to even out my skin tone and make me kind of more all one color also i like doing a self tan because it almost kind of blends in any sort of flaws, hyperpigmentation, dark spots, scars, anything like that that you may have on your body, I feel like is not as noticeable because the tan almost acts like makeup for your body or foundation or something like that. Sometimes I do apply the tan all over my whole entire body and really let it sit and really do a good layer so that overall I will be a few shades darker. You guys have noticed sometimes in some of my like photo shoots and stuff that I do, I have a tan on just because I just think I look better when I look like I'm fresh off of vacation but right now I'm not really trying to make my whole entire self darker I'm really just trying to even out my skin tone of course I do this a lot because I have a naturally more fair complexion and I don't like looking pale and ashy but even if you do have a darker complexion I have seen people use self tan on darker complexions and it does give them that bronzy glow and it does still even out their skin tone so it's worth a try even if you are a bit darker than me now for my face I'm first going to apply apply a really good moisturizer all over my face and make sure that there are no dry patches because the self tan will stick to dry patches and it'll end up looking patchy so definitely moisturize your face really really well first then I'm actually going to be mixing together just like a regular cheaper moisturizer with the self tan to kind of make a tinted moisturizer if you will and I'm actually going to be applying this to my face not only to darken up my face and make it match my body better but also I'm going to be using a makeup brush to strategically place this tanning mixture in the same areas that I would normally put bronzer or contour to basically create like a semi-permanent contour effect. You can use less moisturizer and more self tan to make a darker contour for the actual contouring areas. Definitely apply it to where it's visible but you still want to blend it out because you don't want any harsh lines because it will stain your skin in the way that you apply it. So blend it out but also keep in mind that it's going to appear much darker now than when you wash it off the next day because this self tan is meant to develop overnight and then you rinse off the outside layer the next day and it just leaves you with a more natural looking effect after you rinse it off so don't be alarmed at how it looks right now you just want to make sure that it's blended what I also like to do before it dries down is take a wet towel or a makeup wipe or something and sharpen up the contour similarly to how you would do when you're baking when you do your makeup just to kind of clean it up so it's not muddy or in any areas that you didn't need to put it this will kind of create that highlighted versus contoured effect that you do when you do your makeup and to take it a step further with this semi-permanent makeup technique you can take a little bit of self tan onto a q-tip and run it through your eyebrows to do like a little faux eyebrow tint and darken up any areas of your eyebrows that you might have like sparseness or whatever I do have my eyebrows microbladed which is where you kind of get them tattooed on but it fades over time and obviously with quarantine I can't get them touched up so this is something good to kind of do in between you can also carefully apply it around your eyes if you want to do not get this in your eye I'm not look I'm not saying it's eye safe I'm just saying you could do faux eyeshadow with it as well and you can also contour more specific areas like if you want to do a nice little sharp nose contour or even around your lips with the q-tip as well all right you guys it is the next morning I did not sleep very well I had to to take out um, some of the curl formers on the sides of my head so I could at least like lay my head down because these are not comfortable to sleep in um, and the curls you know they look pretty decent they held up through me sleeping like that um, I had a satin um, scarf laid across my pillow number one to protect my hair and number two so I wouldn't stain my pillow with my 
so tanner on my face so obviously um i'm still looking a little crazy because it has not been uh washed off yet okay so i am out of the shower now just lightly rinsed off that excess tan and hopefully now you can see the result how my chest just blends into my arms and the rest of my body more seamlessly i have more even skin tone a slight little sun kissed glow nothing too crazy and then you can see the effect on my face again it just kind of gives me that glow a slight little contour bronzer effect and then i like kind of tinted my eyebrows hopefully you guys can see the difference i definitely can see a nice little subtle natural difference in person when I do this. All right, next step is hair removal. For my face, I actually like to use these little eyebrow razors. I order these off of Amazon in just like a big bag like this for like maybe ten dollars and they just come with a bunch of them like this you can do it with like your facial cleanser you can do it with shaving cream you can do it with water you can do it with moisturizer you definitely just want to have something on your skin to help the blade glide better so you've probably seen tons of people doing this all over the internet recently i started doing it out of curiosity honestly and i actually really do like the effect that it has on my face also because my skin is sensitive and any type of wax or threading or plucking tends to really irritate my skin so when I want to get rid of my little mustache peach fuzz or little chin hairs because I do have those okay hair is normal let's stop acting like hair is disgusting and also just to shape my eyebrows and get any peach fuzz off of my face in general this is just the easiest and safest way for me if I do it in a clean disinfected manner to where I'm not going to break out so I always use a fresh razor every single time I use something to help the razor glide smoothly so it's not tugging or pulling at my skin and so I tend to not have a problem with getting any bumps or anything afterwards compared to when I try to wax my upper lip or wax my eyebrows I always have a bad reaction so I just prefer to use this blade all over my whole entire face and shape my eyebrows myself but speaking of waxing normally I do go to European wax center or some type of waxing center to get body hair wax such as my armpits or my bikini line or a full Brazilian or whatever it may be because my body can handle it but my face cannot handle it but recently I got into doing DIY sugar waxing this definitely takes some practice and it's not for everyone because not everyone can wax themselves I understand if you just can't handle yanking it yourself but it's actually pretty easy I found a recipe that works really well it's basically a half cup of sugar a little bit of lemon juice a little bit of water mix it up and and heat it up in the microwave. You can get the exact recipe and all the information from this YouTuber right here. She is the sugar wax queen. So I highly recommend just checking out her channel. I don't wanna take any credit or tell you anything that's wrong. So check out her channel for how to make this and how to do this. So I've got my wax and as it cools down, you can definitely see it start to thicken up and get some more of like a wax type of consistency. And the other thing that I use is literally strips of an old t-shirt. This is literally just an old regular t-shirt from Walmart. You could probably use like any old fabric or t-shirt or whatever. And then I personally like to clean the area with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a cotton pad first and prep the area with some baby powder. This is not, um, this is just what I have. Okay, I'm doing my armpits, so hopefully it's okay. So first I just take the rubbing alcohol on a cotton pad and clean the area to make sure it's free of any oils or anything like that. And then I prep the area with baby powder, especially because this is my armpits we're talking about and I will start to sweat and you don't want any moisture because it's not gonna work. So the baby powder just helps keep it dry. And then I am just going to make sure that the wax is cool enough. I'm just using popsicle sticks that I ordered off Amazon to apply it with. Low key it was kind of still too hot so make sure you don't burn yourself blow on it a lot uh, make sure it is a bearable temperature and then you're going to apply the wax against the grain of the hair so you're brushing the hair in the wrong direction when you are applying the wax get your little t-shirt strip ready stick it on rub it on really 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 good and then hold your skin as taut and as tight as possible take a deep breath and exhale 
while you rip it off in the direction of the hair. Rip off in the direction of the hair and that will help prevent ingrown hairs, so they say. And I just repeat this process all over both of my armpits until all the hair is gone and it actually goes by pretty quick. And after you do it a couple times, you really get used to the feeling and it's really not that painful. I like to just wipe it off again afterwards. Make sure I get any of that sticky residue off and just kind of clean the area. Yes, I'm showing you my armpits up close and personal. Another thing that I like about doing a self tan is that I do not put tanner on my armpits purposefully so that the rest of my body gets darker but my armpits stay a little bit lighter. That way my armpits don't have that darker look to them. It kind of like cancels it out if you know what I mean. So if you struggle with like darkness under your arms. Number one, waxing helps with that in my opinion. So I don't get that darkness as much. And number two, if you do yourself tan strategically, you can kind of like cancel it out. And then the cool thing is with this sugar wax is that it's literally just sugar and water. So it dissolves with warm water. So that's what makes this super easy to clean. All I do is I throw them into my sink as I'm using them. And then I'm just gonna run some warm water and I'm gonna let these soak in warm water for a little bit and literally all the sugar will dissolve and the cloths will come out super clean. So this is what it looks like a few minutes later after it soaks and all the sugar dissolves. You literally just rinse it off, clean out your sink, of course, and then lay your fabric strips out to dry so you can reuse them next time. PSA for anyone watching this who thought that whole last thing was gross because you saw my armpit hair, grow up, just grow up. Sorry, I had to say that. Anyway, during this whole time, I almost low key forgot that I was supposed to be styling my hair and my hair was freshly curled from the curl formers, but it wasn't styled. So I just decided to start separating the curls because they come out like super thick Shirley Temple curls. So I just tried to separate them and make it look more natural and just do a nice little side part. Okay, great news everyone. It has only taken me two whole days to reach this point, but I have a nail update. I was able to fix my messed up nails. I was able to find some more nail polish, repaint them, and still do my intended little glitter ombre design. So my nails are done. Are they perfect? Not at all, but I'm much happier with them now. And I think they're decent, especially from a distance. It's like, you wouldn't really tell the difference from when I like normally have my acrylic. So I feel much more like myself now that the nails are done. And I can now finish off my quarantine glow up by doing my DIY lash extensions. That is going to be the last thing that I do. And then maybe I'll like add like a touch of makeup and change my outfit and show you guys the full result. So for my DIY lash extensions, so many of you guys have been asking me about this ever since I did it um, a couple weeks ago. I talked about it on my Instagram stories. I told you guys what I use, but I didn't really show you like my technique on how I got it to work. So this is what I used. Um, I really just used one pack of these Ardell Faux Mink Individual Cluster Lashes. I had like a special little technique on how I put them on and they lasted me for about five days. Probably could have went for like a full week if I was being more careful, but you know, you could get about a week worth of wear out of this, I would say. So I am about to put these on, but you guys are going to have to go to my Instagram to see the step-by-step -step tutorial on how exactly I put these on. I promised that I would do an IGTV video so you guys can see up close and personal on IGTV exactly how I do this. So I will be posting this to IGTV. Um, so go to my Instagram, check me out. Uh, follow me if you haven't already, shameless plug. But yeah, I promised I would do that there. So I'm gonna do that there and just try not to make this video too long because I've already done so much in this video. So yeah, check out my Instagram for the in-depth lash tutorial. And voila, you guys, I finished my DIY lashes. So we got that natural little fluttery look going on. I literally put on the tiniest little stitch of makeup. I'm talking about just like five dots of concealer on my little acne marks, dab that out, powder blush, boom. Like we're good. We don't even need much makeup because I got my uh, self tanner bronzer going on. I got my eyebrow tint, tanner tint, and I got my lashes. 
so all i need is like a touch of concealer and some blush and i feel like i'm good to go my skin just has more of a natural glow to it without having to put on a whole bunch of makeup or anything because of the facial that i did this is what my hair is looking like final result of the hair once again i think it's cute i mean it's not like the best hairstyle i've ever done in the whole world but it's something different just to switch it up and to just make it look better than how it looked at the beginning of this video it's definitely an improvement a little bit of a tan skin is moisturized and exfoliated and glowing yes so this is just like a natural glow up it's not like full glam it's not just piling on a bunch of makeup and putting on a tight dress to make yourself feel pretty this is like a more realistic more giving yourself that I woke up like this type of look that was kind of like my goal is to just do like a cute a cute quarantine a cute little natural quarantine look if you will because I feel like there's a difference between just putting on a whole bunch of makeup and putting on a wig and all that stuff that's kind of just like covering up versus actually doing some self-care, taking care of your skin, doing things that are going to make you feel better when you wake up the next day as well versus putting on a whole bunch of makeup and then you're just gonna take that makeup off and start all over again the next day. With this, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow feeling just as cute as I do right now, pretty much. Even the armpits had a glow up. I think and I hope quarantine is actually coming to an end pretty soon by the time you guys are watching this, but even still, I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you guys are safe and healthy. I hope you do get a chance to, like I said, take some time out for yourself and do some stuff like this. Again, don't forget to check out the lash tutorial on my Instagram. And that is everything. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.